morning. Uh, I'm a little bit late this morning. I'm actually headed to a uh, <laughs> local hardware store. Other hardware stores are available, but I'm going to go to Lowe's. Uh, I love Lowe's. Uh, I need to get some chain. Uh, bought some plastic chain for the photo shoot. I guess uh, in case anybody uh, is just catching this video, I'm doing a photo shoot. I'm actually doing the photo shoot today um, for a graphics design project uh, for an 11 by 17 poster for fighting depression. Um, I got this idea in my mind of what I'm wanting to do. Um, so yeah. So I bought some some of the materials and things that I need um, for the photo shoot um, the other day. But I bought black chain. Uh, they sell plastic chain at Lowe's. Um, I'm sure other hardware stores sell the same thing. It's fairly inexpensive. I think the plastic chain was like 70 cents, 71 cents, something like that, a foot. And it has big, like, one-inch um, links. So it's not, like, tiny little feeble chain. It looks like big, heavy chain. So uh, I'm going to get... Uh, but I bought black. And I was talking with uh, my uh, art professor and uh, talking with my uh, photography professor. And they were like, yeah, black might work. Uh, but, you know, you might want to get... Uh, I want to get white too. Um, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to get some white. We're going to see. Because um, this is going to be a black and white photograph. So it makes it. Kind of correct this just a little bit. It's driving me crazy. You're playing in this gray area, right? And it's funny how you're going to use like yellows purples and blues and things to get these different depths of gray um, you know and it's 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 gonna really work really well um, I'm kind of excited about it I was excited about it in the first video I made talking about uh, you know having the opportunity to do this um, I'm excited about doing it today my first um, organized photo shoot where I went out prospected a model and, you know got props uh, and, and like a vision and everything's going to be kind of planned um, how we want to do it so ahead of time so everybody kind of knows what they're doing whenever they get there so it's going to be pretty interesting um, to see if I can get uh, some uh, maybe some pictures somebody to take some pictures of us actually all working together and setting things up and you know just to because I'm looking at this as like a project right as a learning experience for myself but also so I can remember um, you know because there's a lot that's going to go into this just to kind of show how much actually goes into making a photograph, you know, one photograph. So, I think my phone mount is trying to drop my phone. I don't want that happening. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so, uh, just headed to Lowe's this morning to pick up that chain. Uh, and then I'll go straight to the studio, um, working on a, or planning to start work on a new painting. Um, some concept art that I want to do for the game module I was talking about for this, uh, this summer. Um, get some concept art put together, that way I got something that I can work in Blender with, so. But, uh, oh, excuse me. 
excuse me. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I've got to on my mind this morning. Uh, nothing too political. Posted a, a video on Facebook <laughs> of Donald Trump. Uh, Referring to the EPA as uh, the Department of Environmental, um, which it's a slip up, I understand, but presidents are scrutinized like that. They really are. They have to be very careful about the things they say and anything that they slip up on at all is just going to get hammered. Just absolutely hammered. Um, and, and it probably should be because making small little faux pas like that um, can have huge uh, hold on a second let me turn around again. Uh, can have huge implications. Huge. I mean, you could insult a, a foreign leader and not even mean to, didn't even know what you said. And that's the reason it's really important that you, you don't do those things. But I think it's worse for, for Mr. Trump just for the simple fact that uh, he's, uh, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. great aspirations, um, he's very, uh, <laughs> he's very motivated, he's very motivated, he's out there, he's making a lot of noise, uh, nobody really knows what he's saying, but man, he's putting on a, one hell of a show, <laughs> uh, but, you know, teach their own, he had to, he has every right to run, every right to run, um, you know, uh, but for me, I think that what this really has highlighted is that, you know, is some clarification of whenever we say anybody in the United States can be anything they want, even the President of the United States, this is true. You can be, but you're going to have to do the work. If you want to be a politician, that takes a lot of work. A lot of work. To be a good politician. You want to run around and just make a bunch of noise. And just talk and, and things like that. You're not going to be a good politician. You're not going to be effective at getting, your job, at getting the job done. And then ultimately you're going to lose the respect of the people around you. And then like Hassard that you're seeing right now. Congressman Hassard or whatever. You're going to get indicted. You're going to get arrested. Your family's going to get freaking dragged through the mud. And then your name forever is going to be attached to some, you know, foolishness that you did. So yes, as an American, you can be whatever you want. You can. But you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to learn how to be a politician. You know? If that's what you want to be. And you're going to have to become a good politician. Because the president is like, it, by definition, he is like supposed to be the best of the politicians for that time. Donald Trump's not a politician at all. Not at all. We're not hiring him to be president of a company. So, you know, whenever he fails in situations like this, like, you know, Department of the Environmental. <laughs> I chuckle about it, but I don't take it very seriously. Because I expect it from him. I expect him to sound like an idiot. He does not know what he's talking about. But it's not because he's stupid. It's because he literally doesn't know. He hasn't taken the time to learn. He hasn't had the, you know, 30 years of politics, of learning all the etiquette and learning all the stuff. Now, that's not making excuses for him. That is the absolute reason why I'm not going to vote for him. 
and I encourage all of you not to vote for him. Not because he couldn't possibly be a good president, but he can't be right now. He doesn't have any of the tools. He doesn't have any of the skills. It's going to be ridiculous. Ambition and big talk only takes you so far. And that's only far enough to get yourself into big trouble if you don't know what you're doing. It's the truth. Now I can bullshit my way into any situation. But I better be able to put up or shut up once I get there because if I don't, I'm not going to last. People are going to expose me so fast it's going to be ridiculous. But he has the right to run. He has the money to run. Let him run. Ultimately, he'll come off the backside of this, either the President of the United States, or he'll come off the backside of this as almost the President of the United States. And, and I guarantee you that's how it'll get spun. And you think there's a lot of Trump construction projects now, think of how he's going to market that. He's going to be everywhere. This is a win-win situation for him. And he knows it. And it's fine. It's fine. I. It's fine because the system is set up to allow this to happen. It is perfectly legal and legitimate for him to be running. Even though I consider it morally and ethically wrong for him to be doing it, there's no law that says that he can't. He's making a mockery of the situation. I think he has done tremendous damage to the uh, to the political system in an already troubled environment. I just think he has. You know, nobody trusts politicians now because they don't they don't do what they say they're going to do. Donald Trump doesn't say the same thing twice can't keep up with him. The only thing he says is make America great again. That's such a baseless statement. How? This is a question. Whenever Trump says anything, you should ask yourself something. How? How? Make America great again. Like, has every president that has led up from when it was great to now, have they just been like, masterminding the fall of, of the United States and they wanted it to be horrible? Or do you think that they were legitimately trying to make it great? You know? And it just didn't work. So do we really think that Donald Trump has got like all the answers? Nobody has all the answers. Making a huge sweeping umbrella statement of making America great again is worthless. It's worthless. You can't make a statement that big. Because America is too diverse. Look at look at look at how just the Republican side of things is going. He's only getting about uh 56% of the Republicans right now, I think, to vote for him. It's... It's it's crazy. That means of... Let's say 25%. Let's make the math easy. Let's say that the country is 50-50 Republican-Democrat. And he's only getting 50% of the Republicans. That means he's only getting 25% of the country... So, he can't make America great again by doing what he wants or he's going to piss off 75% of the country. I mean, it's simple. Simple math. Come on. That's the reason that politicians can't make these blanket statements of doing something quite so grand. You have to find a platform. And a platform is an actual, like three points that you're going to go for, you know, the big ones are normally the ones that are floating around in the Supreme Court, you know, 
I'm not going to go through the whole, this, this, this whole acronym for like the gay community, um, or transgender community is, is, is driving me crazy. They just keep adding letters. It's like, you know, lesbian, bi, and gay is what it used to be. It was lesbian, bi, gay, and transsexual. Now it's lesbian, bi, gay, transsexual, and question mark not sure we're not sure we're not sure if we're a boy or a girl if we like boys or girls whatever i don't i honestly don't care i really don't care what you want to do if you want to wear a dress wear a dress if you want to wear pants wear pants if you want to date girls date girls if you want to date boys date boys i don't care it doesn't affect me i really don't care but anyway that's the big one that's a big one that's always that's, that's probably going to be fought and argued forever and ever and ever and ever I, I mean it just is I don't know how long uh, we fought for equal rights for women I don't know how long that was battled around I don't know how long it was battled around for uh, you know civil rights for uh, African Americans in the United States I don't know but you know you're going to have this equal rights of some kind is going to be argued on on a politician's platform. Just going to be. So, there's that one. There's gun rights. There's always gun rights. Look, here's, here, here's how I think about guns, okay? The way I understand gun rights to work right now, I think it works fine. I think you should have to have a FOID card. Firearms owner identification card. The reason I believe in that is because that's like the only filter that we have to keep like visibly crazy people from having something to kill lots of other people. That's so the ID card is important. I think it should be easy to get. I don't think that you should have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops in order to be able to go out and buy, you know, a normal caliber pistol or a uh, uh, shotgun or a normal caliber rifle. I don't think you should. I don't think it should be difficult to do that. Now, if you want to own a rocket launcher... I think you should have to go through some classes. I think you should have to, like, register that somehow. People should know that you have 14, you know, RPGs and RPG launchers in your basement. If Think about that. If your neighbor had 14 RPGs lined up in their basement against the wall and you lived 10 feet from them in your house next door. Don't you feel like you have a right to know that those are there? What happens if Joe Bob's house freaking catches on fire? House catching on fire, not that big of a deal. I mean, it sucks for the guy's house who, who caught on fire, but what I'm saying is, the house could be put out, or if it burns, or even if it burns all the way to the ground, it burns all the way to the ground, but we could contain it, we could maintain it, it'd be okay. But if firefighters show up, and Bob's already passed out or dead because of the fire, and nobody else knows that he has these 14 RPGs in his freaking basement, and then all of a sudden we've got, you know, a half dozen firemen killed and half a neighborhood blown up because he's got ordnance in his in his basement. Come on, this is common sense stuff. If you want it, I think you should be able to get it. I think if you want to own a Harrier jet, I don't care. But you need to you shouldn't be able to go to Walmart and buy it. <laughs> you need to ha have some steps that you go through reasonable steps this is common sense anybody who wants to be you know a hardliner left or right on this issue it's just foolish because if you start asking them those tough questions like what I just posed 
they're not gonna have any answers. It's easy to stand in the middle of a room and scream and holler and stomp your feet. Doing the work's hard. Coming up with a legitimate answer is hard. And that's that's what we've turned into in this day and age right now is a bunch of crybabies that want to stand in the middle of a room and stomp our feet. It's not fair. You can't do this. Something needs to be done. If you think it's not fair, help us to find an answer that is fair, that protects everybody. It protects your rights to own whatever ordinance and firearms that you want, but also protects the people that live around you and protects other citizens of this country that may be affected by it, even if it's inadvertently affected by it. So that's another thing that's going to be argued. That's a platform. Make America Great Again is not a platform. Prison reform is a big thing that's going on right now. It's a, it's a big passion of mine. We have 5% of the world's population. 5%. We have 25% of the incarcerated people in our country, globally. That means we have one quarter. That means we're right here and everybody else in the, on, the, on the planet, Europe, China for God's sake, It's not okay. We've turned incarcerating people into big business. That's not what it was for. That's abusing a system to make money. So that's why, you know, that's always gonna be something that's, that's argued. Those are platforms, that's what you talk about come up with a specific thing you come up with a specific thing that you really think can have a lasting impact because you only have eight years maximum to get lasting change accomplished you need a platform not some cliche soundbite you're not going to make it you're not going to make it you're going to be in over your head. But it's his right. He can learn, do what he wants. Well, I've uh, got to the hardware store. I'm going to go in and get my stuff, and I'm going to go uh, do my photo shoot. So um, I'll probably uh, check back in tomorrow. So till then, see ya.